Welcome to another video and in this video I'm going to go ahead and um, start um, installing the accessories. Before I go on installing the accessories I'm going to do the same thing what I did with the uh, with the previous engine. I'm going to go ahead and paint the engine and again this is pretty much 100% personal preference. This does not have to be done um, but me I, I like I like how it looks when it has the fresh um, paint on it. Here you can see I already have the engine pretty much prepped. I have tape where I do not want paint to be. So here's pretty much covered up any holes, all that sort. Here is the back part pretty much, how it's um, all taped up. And driver's side, same thing, all ready to get ready for paint. This is what I'll be using. I'm using the primer first, and then I'll be moving on to the actual paint itself, and it's just the aluminum um, paint. The reason why I'm painting the engine, um, there's two things. The first thing, just as far as appearance wise, it looks really nice. I, I like how it looks. It looks like it's just like fresh out of the factory. And then reason number two um, is for just for protection, because where I live right now, it gets humid. And then you can, and I've noticed with engines that are, or just with any car that's been like, that's around like areas where it's always humid, kind of rust or some kind of mold or whatever it is, it starts occurring onto the engine. Cause my first engine, the first one that got the blew a hole cause it got waterlogged, that one did not have any rust on it because that car has been in a non um, humid area for its whole life until we moved here and then it blew a hole. And this is what I'm referring to. I don't know if the camera will pick it up very well so you can kind of see how it's all these little spots right here. Um, so I've noticed, you know, with these engines that are, you know, kind of um, based out of, you know, in place where there's humidity, where there is humidity, um, it gets these. So with the paint, that'll just help prevent from any further development of this thing. And I don't think it's gonna, um, ruin the structure of the engine so um, I just again I just want to try and make this engine last as long as it can because apparently with my luck that has not been true so I, hopefully the third time is a, is a charm. I'm gonna go ahead get the cars all out of the way and then cause I'm gonna move this over to the, the garage bay door over there. Here I have the cars out of the garage and here is my professionally done homemade um, paint booth. Um, so yes, I'm very proud of my setup. So here I'm gonna go ahead and paint it. Um, like I said, I'm gonna do the primer first. I'm gonna do three coats of the primer. And then after that, I'll do the three coats of the actual paint itself. Primer is all done. So now I'm gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes. Then I'll go ahead and start putting on the three coats of the paint. All right, so the paint is finally done. So now I'm just gonna let it the paint to cure. It's gonna be about 24 hours I'm gonna do this, so pretty much just the waiting game for right now, but so far I'm really happy with how it came out. It's been 24 hours and I am very happy with the paint, how it came out, how the engine came out. Pretty much looks brand spanking new. Now I can go ahead and install the accessories. So one thing that I remembered from the last um, engine install, because since it's still pretty fresh in my head, was which goes on first? Do the headers go on first or do the accessories go on first? This is all gonna depend. Um, because I do have the JHM V2 headers, the headers need to go on first because I can't, cause if I put on the accessories first, I'll have access to these top, you know, the nuts right here, but for these bottom ones right here, I will not have access, especially because it's so, you know, all this is occupied, I need this room right here to tighten the nuts here that go on the bottom part of the headers. The last build, I remember that was a thing that I ran into because at first I, I installed all the accessories first. Then when I came to put on the headers, that's when I found out that I couldn't have access to these right here. So I had to remove all the accessories off from both sides, put on the headers in first, and then put on the accessories only applies to the side parts of the accessories, so the driver's side or the passenger side. But as far as like the clutch and then the, the up in the front, like with the crank case um, pulley, um, that doesn't matter which goes on first because the headers really don't affect it. The only thing that kind of affects it because the headers do kind of st stick out all the way 
probably up to right here um, is probably the rear um, where the clutch goes and it does not affect it it just only thing it limits you is how much you can you know rotate without you know hitting the um, headers so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and install the clutch first so I have the wide range of motion with the ratchet and whatnot and then I'll go ahead and put on the headers. So here you can see I have not put in the seal yet. So that's what this is right here. So I'm gonna go ahead, put in the seal. And again, I do not have the correct tools to do this. So I'm definitely gonna do the poor boy version of it, but um, I'm not gonna say to do what I do. So I'm not gonna advise that. So I'm just gonna say, always have the right tools to do it unless if you're confident enough to do it the poor boy version of it. The rear seal is nice and installed. It's flushing with the back timing cover. So now I'm going to go ahead and install the uh, flywheel. When it comes to installing the flywheel, I have the JHM slash 034 Motorsports lightweight flywheel. So just to keep one thing in mind, these holes are not evenly spaced. Um, they're not symmetric. It looks symmetric with the naked eye, but in reality, there's a bigger gap aligned here. Same thing with the crank. So you got figure out you know rotate the flywheel until you can see all the holes line up because if the say these three right here might line up but these are the three down here will be off center from the crank so just make sure to rotate before you start torquing things down make sure every hole um gets lined up with um the crank right now i only have two bolts installed and these are only tightened by hand there is no loctite or anything like that it's just to keep the flywheel in place so what i'm gonna do is go ahead and start putting the loctite on these six on these three right here and these three right here and then i'll remove these two put loctite on this one and i'll start doing the torque sequence all right so i have the flywheel um in torque spec so according to jhm's torque specs um the first set of round of torques is 20 foot pounds first in a start pattern once you have the 20 foot pounds in a start pattern then you go ahead and do the final torque which is the second and final that's going to be um 60 foot pounds of torque again also in the same start pattern all right the surface is now clean and prepped so when it comes to installing the clutch disc itself um, there's two things you need first you'll definitely need a clutch alignment tool and that's what i have here and usually once you get a new clutch this will come with the clutch so in the side that you want to be facing your me so i want this side to be facing me so it's the side right here where you can see like the flange part of it. And then on this, which is all flat, that good face is towards the engine. So now, and this part right here, will go into this hole right here. And that's how it's gonna be aligned for the time being. And again, just make sure you know the surface on both sides of the disc is nice and clean, that there's no obstacles, no like, you know, anything that, you know, screws, dirt or anything of that nature. But because when I had this stored, I had it in a stored location in a bag, um, that should not be an issue for me. And there. And that is a line for the time being and it's going to be held there in place. Next part is the pressure plate and here is the pressure plate. And again, the clutch and the pressure plate is from Ringer Racing and this I actually got from Alex from AM Tune. Um, it's definitely a, an amazing clutch and it does pair up if you do have the lightweight um, JHM 034 flywheel. It does pair up with the Ringer Racing pressure plate and the clutch if you have that combination like I do. But again, um, Ringer Racing does have their own lightweight flight wheel, which also you can get that from Alex at AM Tune. This is the stage four clutch. So for what I am doing and the power gains, this thing handles amazing for what I am doing with the stage four clutch here. So on the 034 um, flywheel, I'm sorry, lightweight flywheel, yes, there's three dowel pins right here. So there's one, two, and three, and they're gonna line up perfectly with the dowel holes that are on the pressure plate itself. So I just gotta figure out which um, dowel holes they are. So I believe it's gonna go in like this. Boom. Now that it's all in, and then you're gonna have six um, screws and bolts. There's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, and six. And just like what I did with the clutch, I'm just gonna put one in by hand just to hold the um, pressure plate 
in place while well, go ahead and put lock so right now there is no loctite on this right now for the time being and then one on the other side just to hold it in place. So I'm gonna go, so now that the pressure plate is on, again, I use two screws just for the time being, just to hold the clutch in place, even though the dowels, that's what their job is, but just for the extra security so it doesn't fall off on me. Um, so right now, these do not have the Loctite just yet, and there is six bolts that need the Loctite, and it's gonna use the same exact um, th red um, thread locker, high strength um, thread locker for the threads. Even though I am using two different brands for the clutch, for the clutch system, you know, the 034 slash JHM for the flywheel, and then the ring erasing for the clutch slash pressure plate, um, I'm still gonna use the same torque specs for the, for the pressure plate onto the flywheel because it's pretty much the same thing because, you know, the threads are going onto the, um, the flywheel, which is 034 JHM. So um, that's why it makes sense to use the same torque specs what JHM has because pretty much the materials, I'm pretty sure it's pretty much the same exact material metal, just, you know, this part right here is slightly different, slightly different design, but um, overall, the torque specs should be the same. So according to JHM, um, their torque specs is 33 foot pounds, and again, in a star pattern. I wanna explain as far as how JHM has um, the explanation for the torquing down the, the pressure plate. Um, so pretty much what it, what you wanna do, because there is a spring in here, so if you were to try to torque this down all straight to 33, um, um, the 33 foot pounds, it's kinda gonna be off because this is a spring. So what you wanna do is, you wanna make sure all the bolts are actually flush up against um, the flywheel. So for me, that actually happened to be around like the 15 um, foot pounds. So what I did first, I torqued all the bolts about to like nine. So I make sure that um, nine foot pounds, make sure that all six bolts were about nine. Then I went to like the 15 and that's when I started noticing that the 15 foot pounds, that's when the spring was finally now fully compressed up against to the um, flywheel. So 15 for me, that's what it was, foot pounds around the all six bolts. Then after that, then I was able to torque all the remaining six down to um, 33 um, foot pounds. Um, so I'm gonna do the driver's side because I've been doing the driver's side of everything and then working my way up towards the passenger side. I'm gonna follow that same pattern. So I'm gonna install the driver's side headers first and then I'll do all the accessories like the AC compressor and the power steering. And, and one thing you'll need um, new is the uh, man of the, I'm sorry, the gasket for the exhaust. And with this, um, this is the part number and you can get two of these. These are actually symmetrics. The headers are on. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing the AC condenser. Again, there's really no right or wrong order to do the AC condenser first or the power steering pump second or vice versa. So I'm AC compressors on and held on by three screws to the engine. So this bolt right here connects to the engine straight. And then there's this second and third one right here. These get attached to a plate that which I actually failed to um, mention. So that is my fault. So I don't know if you can kind of see there's a plate right here where my finger is going. And that plate is held on by two screws, those two screws bolt onto the actually engine block itself. So what I did is to install this, first I put this, um, um, the axle right here. I installed this first and you have room to put it in, it in all towards the, um, towards the back of the engine to give you room right here. So once this is in, I was able to scoot, take this out and start threading it here. So I used two pliers right here, two wrenches I mean, and I just, anchored one side and on this side I went ahead and tightened it. So that is, then I went ahead and put the gasket, a little seal that goes over this kind of like this little gear part. The way that the power steering pump connects to the engine block itself. So right here, there's two screws. So there's a shorter one and then there's a longer one. So that's gonna what's gonna connect right here. And then the third part is this gear, the teeth mesh, the teeth gear, whatever right here. That's gonna go ahead and pair up right here, it's gonna be this guy right here. So this goes in like this, and you gotta make sure that there is this little, um, kinda like this gear. So this goes towards the engine, this goes, here let me try to get two hands. So this goes towards the engine right here, or towards the timing if you wanna say. This goes in like this, and that where that sprocket is, right here for that power steering, that goes in like that. 
actually there's three bolts that hold on. So the two that I just um, mentioned right here and this third one right here, this is when you actually put the transmission back onto the engine. So right now, don't worry about this one. This will go back on once we, um, I connect the transmission to the um, engine block itself. Power steering pump is on. It's held on by these two screws. So the top one's the long one, bottom one's the shorter one. And then as mentioned before, that third screw's gonna go right here. That's for when the transmission, it's time to put on the transmission. So for right now, don't worry about that right now. Driver's side engine mount um, frame is on. Um, so these are straightforward to get to this bolt right here and then that bolt right here. So this third one right here, you're gonna need a, oh, it's gonna be an eight millimeter Allen, but you're gonna need like one with a swivel so you can get, cause you can't get to this bolt um, straight on. You'll need to have it approach at an angle. So that's what this is for. And if again, that's with the headers, I mean, I can only speak for the, the JHM V2 headers. I can't speak for the other headers that are out there. Um, I know with the OEM headers that, that that is not an issue. You can get straight to it with just the you know your regular eight mil um, Allen driver side of the headers is wrapped and completed. And I did slightly something different than what I did with the original when I did it the first go around. So the second go around, what I did is I put tape, a heat reflective tape, on each where kind of like where the piece starts. So here's piece one, two, three, four, and then five. Um, the only, um, this is not meant to like reduce, like, you know, help reduce heat. It's mostly to help um, reduce the, you know, the fiberglass um, fragments, like kind of like you can see, I don't know if you can see, so see that right there. So, you know, with the unions, you know, with time, you know, that thing kind of starts to flare out. So this is kind of help to kind of keep it from flaring out. And when it comes to installing the water pump, there's a few key things that needs to be done before just go ahead and just throwing it on there. Um, first, one of the things, again, there's no particular order, is this kind of Allen screw right here. So this Allen screw actually goes into right here. So pretty much what happens is um, this is turned by the um, oil pump and the oil pump is turned by the gears on the back. It's all gear driven. So um, as the timing, so as the engine's rotating, the gears are all rotating. So the one of the, there's a, another kind of like this, but a lot longer that goes towards from the timing components to the oil pump, um, that's what you know so makes the pump work. And then also within the oil pump, there's some gears, whatnot, some sprockets that make the water pump um, spin. So it goes from the timing to the water to the oil pump, and from the oil pump to the water pump. So that's how this is all connected to the um, um, oil pump, if that makes sense. So this goes here, and you can kind of and you can see here on the water pump side so right here where the where the blade or the fan is right here so you can see where there's that allen socket key where that's where that goes so that's the first thing make sure you install this because if you don't have this in the water pump is not going to work at all second um there's going to be two important o-rings that correspond for the water pump and they're gonna and they're actually have them right here right now so there's gonna be like a thicker one right there and there's like a larger thinner one right there so obviously there's you can see there's some grooves right here i don't think you can kind of see it back here but there's like a just like right here there's another little groove right here and that's where the o-rings go so go ahead and put the o-rings in here first and then install it don't install it with the o-rings like that already inserted so you have total four screws and you have um two sizes a longer one and a shorter one so the longer screws so if you're facing um the water pump like this so pretend that it's installed the the two um longer ones go up on top so right here and right here and then the bottom the shorter screws go on the bottom part which go right here and right there this thing is the coolant crossover pipe um so there's two o-rings needed um so there's gonna be this kind of like oval egg shape looking o-ring that goes here and then the o-ring that goes right here so again i'm going to go ahead and lubricate this one with the grease so it can get nice and snug in here because i don't want to insert that dry this there's really no need to put the um silicone grease on this and again there's the two screws that get held on on this side and then there's just this one screw right here next i'm gonna go ahead and start putting in the oil cooler so a few things first is you need two o-rings and they're the ones that go right here um they will stay in place 
but they go right here. And then obviously you can put on the oil cooler. And then there's these four bolts and they're all the same size, four bolts. There's one right here, 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 and here. This is gonna be the bracket for the alternator. So with the bracket, there's a total of five screws. You have one, two, three, four, five. Out of the three of the five, so these bottom three right here are a smaller diameter as compared to these, the two top ones. So the two top ones are the same size and the bottom three are um, also the, uh, the same size with respect to each other. So you can kind of see this, um, the size difference. So it's gonna be kind of hard to, you know, get the, this messed up because, you know, these screws holes right here are a lot bigger than these bottom three right here. And it's gonna go in in this positioning like this and in the starter. So the starter is not 100% um, attached because, um, so this one, so the way that the starter is connected to the engine is with the two bolts that connect the, also the transmission to the engine as well. So right now it is, as you can see, a little loose, but that's fine because once I put on the transmission, once I install the engine onto the transmission, um, the starter will finally be, you know, on, how it should go. So I went ahead and put on the um, cover for the um, headers. Um, then I'll go ahead and put on the alternator because when I was putting on the alternator, I was kind of seeing how to get this because this does wrap around the headers. So I wasn't able to get enough space to wrap this with the head, with the alternator in the way. So got the front part of the engine installed. Got the alternator, the snub mount, um, the idle pulley and also the knock sensor. So here I got the crossover coolant pipe that goes towards the back and the side of the engine. They connect to this right here and right here. If there's one thing that I've learned from my last um, time doing this is to put RTV gasket on here so that the O-rings will stay on because there's not much of a, you know, a lip in here for the O-ring to stay on. Cause once, because when you put it without the gasket, what I was struggling with was having that O-ring staying in place. It kept on falling out, falling out. So one time I just, so the last time I was very, very careful, try to put it in. As I was putting in last minute, the O-ring um, came, I think it was the past the um, driver's side. Yeah, the pat driver's side the driver's side owing slightly fell out and then it got pinched with, when I started torquing it down. And then once I started putting coolant on, um, I noticed that there was a leak coming from the driver's side of the engine and it was coming from right here. Then once I, you know, it was a pain cause I already had the engine back installed and everything um, to get to these bolts right here. So these rear ones were a pain to get to. And then sure enough, once I wiggled this enough, this O-ring right here was pinched. So learn from my mistakes. If, if you've been watching these videos from the beginning and you learn nothing, at least remember this one thing right here. Is to put, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use the RTV gasket seal, the same gasket seal that I use for the valve covers. I'm gonna put like a little dab in here and in here so that the O-rings can sit nice and easy. And then I'm gonna very, very carefully verify that the O-rings are not getting fallout or anything because I do not want that uh, mistake to happen again. Here, so you can see what I'm talking about. I know this is completely overkill, but I do not want to change out this O-ring once the engine is installed. So I got the four screws um, torqued down in the rear. So here in the passenger side, um, got the screw connected right here. Um, here, um, I got the hose, the little coolant hose that line that connects here from the alternator. One thing I was finally able to connect the um, dipstick, so I have the dipstick. There's a connection arm right here that goes to right here to the block. And then obviously it goes down there to where the dipstick hole goes on the power steering line that gets connected to with this and also to the um, engine mount right here. So for right, also I've connected the hose from the water pump to this hard line right here. So, so these are the spark plugs I'll be running. Um, I got these from Summit Racing and I'll post a link down in the description if you, you know, this is mostly like for boosted application spark plugs. So if you're just regular running NA spark, um, set up um, these spark plugs aren't really needed you're really just good with the oem like ngk um spark plugs but yes so these will be the spark plugs these already there's no need to gap these spark plugs 
So I can just go ahead, throw them in and then torque them down. Here's the electrical harness. So we're on this side, here I got the ECU. That's gonna go towards the ECU, obviously. Here I got the, um, where the coal packs go. The fuel injectors on the driver's side. This kind of goes to the AC condenser. This goes all the way down to like the rear where the water pump is for the washer fluid. And here's kind of like the connections towards the back of the engine. So this is, um, this connection right here is what goes right there. Um, these connections right here are the connections that go right there on the passenger side. Here I got the passenger side for the fuel injectors, uh, passenger side um, coil packs. And then over here, you kind of work my way down. Um, so this is here for the MAF sensor. So this is the air intake temperature for the supercharger. This is kind of like a little DIY. I actually go into more explanation in a different video with that. Um, and what else? And this goes here to my positive terminal on the battery. As I work my way down here, I get kind of get for the grounding connections for the, so not ground connections, but um, the live wires for the alternator and the starter. And then obviously for the kind of like your, if you have the SI, the SAI pump and all that, that's what these are, or the, you know, here I have the um, engine mount. But since I don't have the OEM, these are all blocked off. And this goes, I believe, down to the oil, the oil pressure, or the oil level um, on the bottom of the oil pan. It is mostly completed. So I had to do a few little backtrack, just a little bit. So I actually had to remove this mount for the um, engine mount because in order to install the, the harness part to the starter, um, I did need to remove it because I do not have clearance for that starter. And the same thing here with the, you know, the bolt right here, same thing with right here. So I have to go ahead and remove that, install the harness and whatnot, and then install the engine mount harness back on. So I am getting very close to finally getting done with this engine. So as you just saw, the next thing is for me to go ahead and install the engine onto the transmission. And then from there, it's just pretty much just connecting coolant hoses, the remaining part of the wire harness, the ECU, um, filling up, topping off some fluids, and that's pretty much about it. So I'm very excited for the progress I've been able to do, despite having, you know, this huge hiccup in the beginning. Um, but I'm very thankful for the individuals that actually got to help me out. And again, um, you know, Alex A. M. Tune, um, Reed at um, Twiddler Performance, you know, the boys at Jackal Motorsports, uh, Matt and Tony. Um, I'm very um, excited for this next part of this engine. I know I still got a little bit to go, but I mean, I'm very excited and pumped for this to, um, engine to pop, um, for this to work. So yeah, so that will be an end of this video. And if you hear any background noises, it's my little kid. Um, playing. I'm trying to teach him some new things, but he's really getting more fun out of the fan more than actually the engine build, but that would all change once he gets older. I mean, that's the hope. Hopefully he doesn't grow up just playing with fans. Hopefully he gets more into cars, just like his dad. All right, so that'll be the end of this video and I hope you guys are learning something new and hope you guys have a good one. Thanks.